If I said to you, 50% of marriages in the U.S. end up in divorce, would you be surprised? Could this startling statistic be the driving force behind the growing trend of American men who are going overseas to find a girlfriend or wife? Well, first of all, let's get a few points clear. This trend isn't exclusive to American men. In fact, men from various corners of the world, the UK, Canada, and beyond, are expanding their horizons. In the last 24 months alone, there has been a surge in international dating interest, particularly in countries such as Vietnam, the Philippines, and so on. But what makes Southeast Asia so special, and why now? Today, we will swap our boots for flip-flops and embark on a journey to see why men are dating overseas, the risks men face, and why so many guys are now telling you to date in Asia. Although our life experiences are significantly different, we find ourselves traveling down the same road. So what shared experiences could possibly have set us on this shared course? Society is a complex topic, and unfortunately, society in the Western world has gone too far. This week, I spent several days searching through social media on this topic, and if I was to summarize how men feel in one sentence, it would be this. Men have had enough. Enough of being blamed for everything, and enough of being a walking bank account. Society treats women very differently from men. In 2018, a report from Pew Research Center indicates that only 17.5% of single parents with custody rights were men. Many studies have concluded that childcare costs after a divorce fall more heavily on men. And this isn't taking into account the countless societal norms and expectations of men in the Western world. From a logical point of view, putting aside our thoughts and experiences, Western society makes dating as a single man an undesirable choice. Okay. I was keen on getting a pulse on what gentlemen from the West, particularly those past the age of 45, thought about this whole situation. So I decided to message my email subscribers to see if any of them fancied a chat. One of the responses came from Jonathan. Hello. Now, Jonathan is a 48-year-old guy who's been around the block a few times in Chicago, but now lives in the Philippines. But just to give you a heads up, I'll be using an AI voice to represent Jonathan. To be honest, it's a bit of a challenge to get folks on the channel to discuss this topic unless you catch them off guard, such as a street interview. But hey, let's take a listen. Okay, here goes. I'm sharing life with my Filipino wife in the Philippines. It feels as though I've managed to escape the matrix. Reflecting on my days back in America, it seems to me that the dating scene was governed by restrictive norms. It felt like an unfair game, with 90% of the women setting their sights on the top 10% of men. This left most men either sidelined or trying to get with potential partners they found less than desirable. Please understand, I bear no grudge against women. Quite the contrary, some of the most cherished years of my life were spent in the company of an extraordinary woman back home. We were inseparable for over a decade, but when that relationship fell apart, I saw how toxic dating is now in America. To be honest, women now are different from what they were. I know this might sound strange and the younger guys won't get it, but it's the truth. Most women now look to replace instead of repairing what's broken. So that is what Jonathan had to say. But what about other points of view? Well, there is a question that popped up this week and it asked, why do many American men prefer foreign women to be their wives? And this is the number one answer with over 1,400 upvotes. Simply put, the Western world has lost its way. The most important aspect of any society is the family unit. If the family unit falls apart and the family values are lost, the very fabric of society is inching to tear apart at the seam. Forget the economy, forget identity politics, forget the right and the left, forget education, equality, racism, and all that other stuff. If the family nucleus is gone, the rest of it all will soon fall apart. Canada has a divorce rate of over 60%. I don't blame women for this. 
I just blame our culture. I have no desire to become an uncle to my kids. The guy who sees them on the weekends? Why should anyone accept being reduced to visiting his own children? Western-style socialism, divorce laws, the welfare state, political correctness, and feminism have all contributed to destroying the fabric of the family unit here. But Filipinas have an extreme sense of family. They would do anything for their family, and that's exactly what I want. It does come at a cost because my revenue has to not only help us but help her parents and siblings as well. But I must respect that and take the good with the bad. The other reason is financial. I certainly appreciate that women want a man who can provide for them. It's not selfish or shallow, it's just common sense. They should seek out a man who can offer them a roof and food for them and for their children. There is nothing wrong with that. But I am a construction contractor. I don't make all that much money and at 50, I find myself too old to take on a mortgage and save for my children's education. However, I can offer a premium, very desirable life to a Filipina. I can buy a decent house in the Philippines without having to borrow. In fact, I borrowed only $2,000 from my dad to pay for our home upfront. Every steak, every plate of Italian food is a true luxury in the Philippines. So I prefer to give steak to my family and be appreciated for it rather than them expecting it as a given. In Canada, I'm a bum. In the Philippines, I'm an upper middle class man. Why should I willingly choose to remain a bum? Wow. So do you agree with Jonathan and this other commenter? After all, some people may be watching this and completely disagree and would argue and say that women in the U.S. or the U.K. are no different than women in Asia. Hmm, so is the grass greener on the other side or is this just a big myth? Comparing the culture is not an easy task. Unlike other topics, there is little data to examine the subject. But what we do have is men from all over the world sharing their experiences of dating in Asia. You got to take a look at this. Family, In other words, you want to have children. Filipinas are a great choice because unlike in the West, where a lot of times in the United States, the women want to choose between their career or their family, or they want to put off having a family until much later, that's not really the case in the Philippines. I mean, sure, you're going to find some that just don't want to, or they do want to uh, put it off, but for the most part, most of them are going to be very, very open to having a family. That's the reason they want to get married to begin with. I've rarely met any Filipina who was not interested in getting married and having her own children. As a single guy traveling through Asia, I feel as if I have a fiduciary obligation to share the uh, dating experiences or the um, interpersonal interaction from a single guy's perspective. And that's something that's definitely different here on this side of the world. Uh, there are a lot of guys who are living in, as I was years ago, uh, unhappy with the with their outcomes. Mm -hmm. And moving to the Asia Pacific region has been the best decision of my life. Even though I I don't date a lot, you know, compared to other people, and I tend to be a recluse. But uh, Filipino the, women are the best. They make the best wives. They're among the finest women on the planet, if not the finest. I wish I would have knew that when I was much younger. Hopefully this little bit of wisdom will help somebody else. Now, it's likely no surprise that many women disagree with this whole idea. <gasps> I know, I was shocked too. Over the years, many women have posted on YouTube and TikTok about how messed up men are for going abroad to find a girlfriend. They tell you that you as a man are lazy, broke, and pathetic for dating abroad. And guess what? Some even criticize Asian women by saying they are uneducated and just dating a white guy because they need to escape poverty. Is this really the reality? Or do women only have themselves to blame? Well, these are what some of the ladies are saying. Honestly, the amount of white dudes with Thai women that are waiting to board international flights, it's an absurdity. It is crazy. <laughs> like, half of the couples in this airport right now are beautiful Thai women with super basic white dudes. <laughs> I didn't know what a passport bro was until one of my recent videos did well. Who's gonna tell them? Who is going to tell these men that American women are some of the last demographics of women to catch up with what we're, we're talking about right now. You think Russian women are going to put up with your shit? You think Asian women are going to go 50-50 with you on the bill?
you think French women are going to sleep with you just because you showed up? Oh. After watching these videos, I came across this interesting article. The article discusses the trend of American men seeking foreign brides through international dating services. The article questions the motives of men in these situations, suggesting they might prefer women who are more submissive and easily exploited. It also addresses the ethical issues tied to the business model of these services, likening it to modern-day slavery where women trade their beauty for economic stability. Comments range from this lady who said, Men bring these problems on themselves by not wanting a relationship with an equal who lives in the 21st century. Screw making men happy. People need to make themselves happy, not rely on others for that. And there are comments like this one. Now for context, this is in relation to a certain part of the article which said, if you can't find an American bride, perhaps the problem is not the 40 million women. Maybe the problem is you. While there's a logic to this statement, that same study showed that 61% of single men were actively looking for a relationship while only 38% of single women were. Given those statistics, the women have the most choice and can't find someone they consider a good partner. Using the same logic you applied there, they are the ones with the problem. From speaking to viewers of this channel and expats over the years, many feel that back home women are selfish and entitled. So because of this, they travel to Asia and meet Asian women who are beautiful, intelligent, and caring. There is literally no competition. Whatever side of the fence you sit on, the question is, where is all this leading? We have already seen big changes in society over the years. There are a lot of people out there who say that men are becoming more like women and women are becoming more like men. There is even a conspiracy theory that there is a plot to make modern men weaker, and some research has suggested testosterone levels in the general population have been declining year after year. But regarding overseas dating, if men continue to move to Asia and trends in society continue, what will be the impact of this? Well, there are a few potential outcomes. Asia may move in the direction of the U.S., and the U.S. may move in the direction of Asia. This means that dating becomes more difficult in Asia as more Westerners move overseas, and at the same time, dating in the Western world becomes less challenging, but many don't see this happening. Revaluation of needs. So what could potentially happen is both men and women in society revaluate what they can contribute and revaluate their expectations. But unless dating becomes impossible, this again seems unlikely. Judgments and divide. The more likely situation is that there will be more pressure and social norms will be placed on men. Men will be judged negatively for dating in Asia by local women as they continue to believe men are only dating abroad because of money, power, or some other dynamic. But having said this, after looking through the trends and data, more Western women may return to family values. In reflection, it's no big deal who you like or who you date. There are a lot of Western women who date Asian men and nobody blinks an eye. But when men date in Asia, questions and assumptions are made. I always try and put together my videos in a way that shows facts, insight, and even the other side of the coin from people who disagree. But even if we look at the fundamentals of this topic, anyone can see for men at this current time, Asia is the much better option. But to clear up a few points, most Western women don't have any problems with this topic. The ones who kick off tend to be the ones who are single and ironically give the most dating advice. If a man sees a woman as only a body, he has gone too far. But similarly, if a woman sees a man as only a wallet, she has gone too far. Everything is on the same scale, just at a different degree. The reality is that there are pros and cons to dating in Asia just as much as dating in the Western world. But as a man, 
you have a lot more going for you and a much brighter future in Southeast Asia. Let me summarize it like this in Asia. If you lose, you lose a little. If you gain, you gain a lot. In the West, if you lose, you lose a lot. And if you gain, you gain a little. Take a look at this video where we dive into this topic in a whole new light. Until next time, stay strong and I will see you in the next one.